right. How many of you know the challenge of change is real? There is a real challenge to change, right? Uh, when we talk about fasting, I, I find it interesting. We're in a season of fasting, and generally what happens at the first of the year, we just naturally kind of consider time. How well is our time spent? How well did we spend it last year? And how can I pr improve the way I spend my time or challenge myself to change in the new season? And so we do that, right? If you listen to the commercials on television right now, there's a thousand commercials trying to challenge you to change, to eat better, to exercise. There's a million food commercials right now about being healthier and gym exercises, machines that are cheap and all those things. So I thought we'd start out this morning just with probably the top 10 uh, New Year's resolutions. You're probably going to know exactly what most of these are because they're very popular. Number 10, one of the New Year's resolutions where people want to make a change in their life is to improve relationships. How many of you, you think about that, you go, yeah, this next year I could see how even I would want that on my New Year's resolution list. Another one is spend less time on social media. Who are you out there that spend too much time on, what is too much time on social media, right? It's kind of like the guy on the phone. There, there is a balance there. Uh, we need to do something. Uh, we, 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 there's nothing wrong with social media, but it can be consuming, can't it? So some have said, I need to take care of my time with social media. May I say this when we're there? There's so many studies out right now about social media. One of them is about pseudo-relationships. And what that simply means is, is that you're having a relationship with somebody that is to some degree under false pretenses. It's only the person that I'm displaying on my Facebook that you're connected with. And the person on Facebook that's me that I'm putting there and displaying before others, it's not completely me. Can you, you understand what I'm saying? It's, it's the best side of me. <laughs> it's the parts I like about me, but it's not all of me. And so what happens is we have these relationships that lack some authenticity. All right, let me move on so I don't preach that sermon. Okay. Number eight, uh, volunteer and give back. I thought that was interesting. That one a little bit surprised me. So, uh, so the number eight New Year's resolution was I want to volunteer. I want to give back more. Number seven was travel more. How many of you like to travel more? This new year, I'd, I'd love to. And I'd really like the money to do that. Amen. All right. Uh, then, of course, you're going to get this one, number six, eat healthier. How many of you knew that was going to be on the list, right? Be smarter with our, my money. Be smarter with my money. That's a good one, right? Real popular. Uh, quit, uh, uh, quit smoking is one of them. Quit smoking. Uh, learn a new skill this year. Drink less alcohol, <laughs> not no alcohol, just less, and uh, <laughs> I thought that was interesting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, if you can do alcohol well and you can keep it under control, then uh, you probably don't need that resolution, but if you say you need to drink less, you probably have a problem and you need to not drink at all, but that's a whole other story. Okay, uh, exercise more, that's number one. How many of you knew that that would be on the list? Absolutely. So this morning, we're in this season of time where you and I consider, what do I want this next year to look like? What do you want next year to look like for you? What, what is it? Here's what happens in many cases. You and I begin to consider last year, how do I want to improve next year? And if, in general, what we do is we look at what went bad last year, and I want to figure out how to make it better this year. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but we have to be careful about Looking a little bit past my emergency problems in my life, my money, my emotions, my uh, relationships, and I have to be careful not to let those items just consume what I want to accomplish this next year. It's real, real possible that the Lord is challenging you with one item to improve in, and all the others will fall into place if you'll improve in this one item. How many of you know if your one item this year, your one word was to improve the way I love myself and the people around me. How, how many of you, you know that that would change everything? That would change all your relationships. That would change uh, the way you navigate through life and work. It, it just has a global effect. 
And so here's what we've done. Our church is going through this fasting thing, and it, uh, the Bible tells us to do it. it. It tells us it's healthy for us to fast. Uh, you need, if you have health issues, you need to do this on the supervision, obviously, of your doctor. We have paperwork in the back that describes what fasting is all about. But essentially, it's about a focused period of time where you and I are holding back some food and saying to the Lord, I need you more than I need food. I need your help and guidance so I can do life better. That's more important than food. Although I still need food, I'm going to minimize it. So I might, one fast might be, I'm going to take, I'm going to skip one meal a day. And during that time period, I'm going to read the, God's word and pray and just have a talk with him and just talk to him about my life and what I need help with. It's a more focused time, spending more time with him than I normally would on a regular basis. So that, that's the big picture of fasting. And what we're challenging you to do, uh, along with our church, and maybe you're here for the first time, we'd love for you to jump in. And if you don't know about fasting, uh, you, you don't feel like you have to fast, but if you'd like to learn more about it, again, I, I have paperwork at the connection table. But here's the challenge. Uh, regardless of where you're at this morning, we'd like for you to choose one word, one word, to describe the change that you would like to make in 2018. Here's what I know. You and I, if we're not careful, uh, we will create a list of all the changes we want. And it could be a paragraph long, and sometimes it could be five pages because we just want to change everything. Have you ever tried to aim at five objects and throw one dart at it? You're only going to hit one of them if you're lucky, and most of the time you'd miss all of them because you're, you're, you're confused. There's just too much there. Here's the idea of one word, and there's a book written by a gentleman who uh, had an amazing experience. I'll show you a video next week, and he wrote this book about one word, and his one word for the year was believe, and his wife's one word, uh, or, excuse me, his wife's one word was believe, and his was uh, trust. I believe it was love or trust, and uh, it, little did they know when they got into that year that she had cancer. She got cancer. And that word, those two words begin the one word that to sustain them through that period. And she's now been cancer free for four years. And it's a great testimony. And I'm hoping to show you that video next Sunday. But here's the idea. This triggered for him to write this book. And the idea is simply this, that you and I, if we think of, uh, if we try to memorize a paragraph, we try to memorize a list, we generally forget the entire list. How many of you know that by the end of February and March that most of the gyms will no longer be full in the evening, amen? They went and signed up and they did three weeks and then, you know, uh, you join uh, a weight loss program and you hit it really hard and sometimes it falls apart by March and you're back at Habit Burger just praising the Lord with that big old double-double, amen. It's hard, isn't it? And why do I say these things? Because it's a challenge to change. Look at somebody next to you and say, it's a challenge to change, right? It is. Now listen, if they look at you like, no, not, not really. You just go, no, I'm your friend. I'm close to you. You need to change and you're not doing very well at it. I will tell you, you need some help. It's hard. It's not easy to change. I mean, I, I can... You know, I, I do a lot of counseling and talking to people, and I have some life experiences. Not, you know, I don't know everything, but there's some things I've done and I've figured out with God's help, and I will try to share that with somebody till I'm blue in the face, and they will not make the change. They will not either not believe me, or they'll take that word and they'll, they'll try to hustle it and change it and make it into their own, and they'll try to do life their own way, and it's really not doing life my way, it's only, I'm simply sharing doing life the way God told me to do it, and if you'll do it that way, then you'll be blessed, and they just won't do it. Now, there's a lot of reasons, sometimes it's not just because they're mad or they don't believe me, sometimes they just don't know how, sometimes change is just hard. You know, go home and love the one you're with. Man, that's a great song. But, you know, sometimes the person you're with, you know, you're not even sure the Lord loves them sometimes. Amen? <laughs> They're rough. They've got bad days. It's just hard. No, no, go home and just show them love. You know, just be the initiator of reconciliation. What does that mean? That means if, if your kid is 99% is wrong and you're the parent, you're 1% wrong i'm asking you if you're only one percent wrong in this whole problem for you to step forward and say i need you to forgive me and don't go i need you to forgive me for my one percent but 99 percent of this is yours 
You know, that, no. Well, I don't need to do that. They're the kids. They're supposed to listen to me. They're supposed to do what I say. And then you get this attitude, and I go, well, you can do that if you want, but change will not happen in that relationship. There are things that you and I need to do to change. And our instincts just jump up. And it, have you ever walked away going, why did I say that? Why do I act like that? Have you ever gone to your room and go, why do I do these stupid things? And then we go, I want to change. I want to change. And next year, I want to change. I want to change. And in 2020, I want to change. I want to change. And we all want to change. It's a given we all want to change, but it's hard to change. And I want to talk to you this morning about five ways to really change your ways. Five ways to change your ways. And I, I really want you to ask the Lord, and that's what the challenge is. What is the one word that capsulizes the changes that you want to have happen this year? And why we're forcing you down to one word is you can remember one word throughout the year. Something about committing yourself to one word that represents the change that you want to have happen in your life. Here's what you do is you just use that word every day, every week of your life. And every time somebody walks up and uses the word that you've settled in your heart, that is the initiator, the reminder, the challenge for the change of your life, you're going to go, that's right, I'm trying to work on that. I'm trying to get better at that. See, our, our problem with change many times is a lack of focus. And the idea of coming to one word, you'll be sitting there and you'll be having a bad day. And let's say your, your word for the year is peace and you're experiencing everything but peace. <laughs> you're at school and you got a test and you just took it and it's ugly. You got to go home and tell mom and dad about it. There's no peace in the house, in the house of our hearts, Right. And you're going home, God, man, I need peace, you know. And you're just, you're not even thinking your one word, I need peace, but all the way home, a kid walks up and starts talking to you at high school, and he says, man, I just need more peace. And, oh, yeah, that's my one word. You're on the way home, you're listening to a worship song or a song on the radio, and it, it goes, man, God says I want to be the peace of your life. You get home, and, you know, you got this devotional on your phone and throws up scripture every day, and peace jumps up on the phone. Oh, man, I just got drilled by God on four different occasions. The word peace came up, and that's my one word. And all of a sudden, it's really change happens with the power of focus. See, real change happens when I stay focused and committed on something, and then change can grow in me. I can make the... Uh, now, how many of you know all change isn't good? <laughs> just to change for change sakes doesn't fix everything, does it? Have you ever just thought, I'm just going to do this, and you change and you paint the room, you know, blue and red, and you're just going, oh, man, that was not good. That, that didn't work. You know, so we're not, we're talking about strategic change, asking the Lord. So what would that one word be for you? So here's what we want you to do at the end of the service. I have that board on the back. You don't have to put your name on it, but there's a board back there, and there's a felt pen, and there's a sticky piece of paper. And I want you to go ahead and write out the one word you believe this morning is the word that represents the change that needs to happen in your heart. And what we'll be doing is be praying with you about that one word. And we're hoping that when we get around to 2019, you're going to go, Pastor, I'm going to have to change my word because I'm like the most best spouse in all the world. <laughs> I changed last year. They love me. I get bigger gifts. He's taken me to thousands of vacation spots. I'm humming. Let's go to another one. You know, now let's go finances and so we can go out and travel more with the guy who loves me now or the gal that loves me so much. It's great. Maybe it's just no fear, right? You don't want fear. You want peace. You just want a stress-free emotional experiences next year all the fear and anxiety to go away come up with one word okay so that's where we're headed that's what i want you to do okay so here's a verse in the bible the challenge of change it says this it's in ephesians 5 if we could pull that up i think i have that this says, be very careful everybody say careful <laughs> it says then how you live be careful how you live now this verse is trying to tell you and I that if you're going to live a life of wisdom, then you have to stop 
take consideration of how you're living and how you want to change to improve how you're living. And here's what it goes on. It says, uh, don't live as unwise, but as wise. Okay, that sounds easy, right? Uh, I get that, but how do I live that out? Then it goes on. It says, making the most of every what? It says, making the most of every what? One more time, making the most of every... You know, opportunities come in different looks, right? When you, somebody you care about is screaming at you, that's a great opportunity. <laughs> no, Pastor, that's not a good opportunity. No, it's a great opportunity. It's a great opportunity to say so. This is not going well. What is it that I can do right now to calm you down and let you know I care about how you feel? I don't necessarily like the words you're using right now, but I want you to tell me how you feel so I can be in a better position to solve the problem in our relationship. That's a great opportunity. It's also an ugly opportunity if it goes the other direction. (laughs) Oh, yeah? Well, you always and you never, and you know, I've never done that. You always do that in this relationship, and I can flare, and it can be an ugly opportunity, right? But it's an opportunity. And the question is, is how I handle relationships better this next year? It says don't handle them as wise or unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity. And here's, here's the catch, because the days are evil. What that verse is trying to communicate to you and I is that we live in a difficult world, wouldn't you say? It gets more difficult and difficult every year. And the, the, the world we live in, the problems that exist financially, relationally, emotionally, you know, you can, you can even leave California, you can go to the Midwest, and I mean, it's, it's really more peaceful. Those people know how to relax. I mean, if you go to Hawaii, my daughter just went to Hawaii, I mean, the hang loose thing is, you know, there are signs on the store say, you know, 9 o'clock to 5. That guy might show up at 9. He doesn't show up at 9, right? You want, see, he shows up at 9, 15, 9, 30, because it's hang loose and everybody's chill. And you're envious because they live longer. They have less stress than us. We live in a stressful world, don't we? And so life is difficult. Here's the problem is that because of all these difficulties and, if you will, the evil that's in the world, we get caught up and consumed with all that. And we just live in fear and anxiety and we never really move out of that. And make a change and say, I I know it's here, but I'm not going to allow it to rule the life I live. I'm not going to allow the relationships I'm involved in at work to control my happiness. Right? But yet it happens sometimes. I'm not going to allow my financial situation to steal the joy and happiness in my life. I refuse to do that. I want to make that change. I'm tired of living paycheck to paycheck and just being mad and angry at God, everybody, and, and, and my spouse isn't making enough money, and the kids need to get a job, and I don't care if he is five. Amen? There's got to be a job in the nursery for a five-year-old. He can clean up the toys. He can get a couple bucks. Amen? I'm just, you know, it's just like, I, I don't want to live that way. I want to make a change, but I can't change. Here it is. I can't change until I get more money. I can't change until they're nicer to me. I can't. See, we can make excuses for change. I'm trying to point out change is hard. There's a real challenge to it. But the minute you give the control of change over to other people is the minute you've lost control. You hear me this morning? The minute that you've decided that my happiness and my future is in the control of the behavior of people around me is the moment you're in a lot of trouble. Because now you got to sit around and wait till they're nice. you got to sit around until they get a pay raise. you got to sit around and wait and wait and wait. And you've essentially said, I can't change the life I'm living. And that would be a lie. The Bible says that life goes by very, very quickly. And that you are and I are to consider to count our days. Have you ever counted your days? Have you ever said, I'm at this stage of my life? And I'm, I'm a little disappointed when I look back. There's a couple of years there. They were kind of wasted. <laughs> Very little happened in that time period. And then you think back, you know, I, I, the people I love the most 
in this last decade, there were a few years there where I didn't give my time and attention to them like I wanted to. I got busy with life. I got frustrated by their actions, and I didn't love them the right way. And there's a verse in the Bible, I want to look at it, Psalms 20. I believe I have a slide for that one too. I believe it's 20, excuse me, Psalms 90, 12. And it says, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. That verse says that there's something that's connected with wisdom, a heart of wisdom. How many of you just want a heart of wisdom? That, that sounds good, right? I want to apply wisdom to the choices I'm making in my future, to the spouse that I want to pick and marry someday, teenagers. Would you want a heart of wisdom to pick out the spouse God has for you? Or would you like to go through three or four of them and then finally get one? No, see, you want a heart of wisdom, right? How about finances? Uh, Lord, I want a heart of wisdom with my finances. And it might mean I don't get to go to Taco Bell that much anymore. <laughs> or a Habit Burger. <laughs> I might have to make a sandwich. But if I were to remove, if I were to look last year, here's the heart of wisdom, because I'm counting my days, I'm looking back. I know a few years where I made some terrible financial choices. I didn't have a heart of wisdom, and it stole from me the joy of that year. I lived under the pressure of financial imprisonment, and it was no fun. But by reflecting on that, I said to myself, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to get myself out of this. I'm going to get God's help. God says, I know change is hard. He goes, but I want to help you. So here's five ways to change your ways. Five ways to change your ways. Number one, I think we all know this, but number one, the first way we change is with God's help. Can you say that? Say, God changes me. Go ahead and say that out loud. God changes me. There's something that happens when I have a talk with my Heavenly Father that initiates change. You know, my wife can tell me for 10 years, I'm a certain way, I'm a certain way, I need to change. And for 10 years, I can tell her, no, I think you're wrong. This is more about you than it is about me. <laughs> and she just keeps saying, no, you really got this issue. You know, I love you, but you got to work on it. And she can say it and say it. Your mom and dad can tell you. Your brother and sisters can tell you. And somehow... Somehow, these are the people we love, but somehow you and I, don't look at me like I'm the only one, okay, because you're with me on this one. We look at all the people we love and we go, no, I think you're all wrong. <laughs> I'm not short-tempered. What would make you think that I'm short-tempered? I can't even believe you would say such a thing <laughs> as I'm being short-tempered with them. And, and then all of a sudden, you can be in prayer, you can be reading a verse in the Bible, and it talks about being slow to anger and God will just whisper in your ear, dude, that's you. <laughs> I hate to tell you, but your wife was right. <laughs> your kids are right. Your mom's right. Your brothers and sisters are all right. You got an issue with anger. You flare too quickly. And in that moment, you go, he might be right. <laughs> He's king of kings, the Lord of lords. He's God. He knows me better than I know myself. And in that moment, he speaks. But here's what happens. I go, wow, they're right. And it's in the acknowledgement of that moment that I go, I've got to work on this. And there's something. Have you ever, have you ever just had a bunch of people tell you a bunch of stuff and you didn't believe them, you didn't believe them, and you went home and your mom set you down, usually one parent or a grandparent, grandmoms are great for this. They just sit down and they say, honey, they always say, honey, right? Come here, honey, what's going on with you? And then they, they start talking and, you, and the kid starts sharing with his grandpa or grandma and all of a sudden, oh, well, you know, sweetheart, did you ever think that? And then they just begin to talk to you in such a way that you go, my grandma's right. He, he, she's actually supporting the mom and dad, but she's so wise, he didn't know it until it was over with. You know what I mean? She's going, man, grandma loves me, and the way she said that to me, it, it's just something about the loving nature of a grandmother who has nothing to win in this battle that's going on between a teenager and their parents, but that teenager's at her house, and that teenager goes home changed because of that conversation. 
in the same way God does that for you and I. He loves us so dearly that you realize he's not angry with me. He just wants to help me to process change. And nobody can lovingly tell you, Pastor Steve, I love you, dude, but <laughs> you got some issues. And this is one of them. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's change. So number one, if you really want to change your ways, you have to go and ask God to help you. Have you ever had a heart problem? Let me put it this way. You, there, are, there are changes that you can't even make by yourself. Okay, so we're going to look at these five. Have you ever had joy stolen from your heart and peace and anxiety just consumes your heart? And you honestly, honestly are crying out to God, I cannot make fear leave my heart, God. I, I can listen to all the positive shows and, and I can watch no fearful shows and I, I can only read good things and I still can't get rid of the fear in my heart. It's one of those areas where you need God's help. And he says, God says in the Bible, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. And a sound mind's an awesome thing. A, a mind that's at ease. That's at rest. When's the last time your mind was at rest? God says, that's, that's what I have for you. That fear thing, the Bible says, if you study that word, the, the word fear is really comes from the devil. It's the language of Satan. It's the language of hell. And God says, I'm not even the author of that word. I didn't create that word. He did. And God says, I don't have that for you. So God, so if five ways to change your ways. And one of them is uh, that God can change me. Number two, the Bible will change you. Number two, if you're writing notes, the Bible will change you. The best way God communicates to you is through his holy word. See, I just spit out some scriptures there for you with regard to fear. Whatever one word you put on that wall, I would really challenge you to pick one verse to go with it. Let's say you, um, you put on that wall um, strength. You wanted more strength this year than you've ever had before in every area of your life. And there's a verse in the Bible that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And what if every day of your life you hear the word weakness, which makes you think of strength, and you go, my one word this year is strength, is, is strength, and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What if you said that? Every, see, you see, when you hear your, your father or your mother go, you can do this. Have you ever had them do that? You can ride this bicycle. I know your knees are bleeding and you crashed five times, but let's do it again. I know your mom wants you to quit, but we ain't doing that. Get out there. Let's bloody up the other knee. Let's do this. You can do this. I'm sounding like a terrible parent right now, huh? That's the way my dad was. Just, we'll do it. But, but here's the point. You need somebody that's encouraging you and says, we can do this together. I, I can do this. I can help you do what you're wanting to do. The Bible does that. So if I'm going to change my ways, I need, God can change, can change you. The Bible can change you. And number three, you can change you. So here's what happens. In order for there to be change, you have to be a participant of change, don't you? You have to. So God says, I want to help you with your change. What's your one word? And God says, so your one word is uh, fearlessness. And you've got this Bible verse that says, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. So that's God. I've got the Bible. And now I have to change. Now I have to quit I have to participate with what God said. And I can't just go around. Have you ever just met somebody that's always fearful? It's like, remember that? Oh, this is going to date me. There was that old cartoon, we're doomed. It's Gulliver Island. We're doomed. We're never going to make it. It's never going to work. You know, it's kind of like hee-haw. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Doomed, despair, agony on me. You sing that song all day long. You can just stay in fear. You watch fearful movies and go, oh, that's going to happen to us. He's going to break into our house. He's going to kill us and slaughter us. Turn that show off, amen? Come on. I'm struggling with fear. Look what you're watching. Can you just delete those from your DVR? You know, so we got to participate. So we, we're talking to God. We're listening through his Bible. And we're saying, Lord, what should I do? 
And one of the things you can do is commit to get somebody else to help you. This is what I'm trying to do. Anytime you hear me talking fearful, I want you to just look at me and say fearless because that's my one word this year. That's all you have to say. Don't give me a lecture. Just say fearless. And all of a sudden, somebody's participating with you. How many of you know situations will change you? So situations will change you. The only question is, will it be good change or bad change? And the point this morning is, you may say, I can't change until my situations change. No. See, again, you've given control over to the circumstances of your life, and they determine whether you have a good life or a bad life, and you now have no control. And God says, you can't live like that. Jesus went through the cross experience. I mean, that's not a good circumstance. All the way through, he's going, he's hanging on the cross. The guy who nailed the nail through his hands, hung him on the cross, and he looks at him, he looks up at heaven, and what does he do? He goes, Lord, forgive this guy. He doesn't know what he's doing. He just, he's just confused. I would have handled that just a little different, okay? I'd have called, hey, Heavenly Father, can we smoke that guy right now? Send one of your angels down and toast him up. I'm done with that guy. That's the way I want to handle the circumstance. In the middle of your financial discussion with your spouse, you could handle that wiser. In a relational or a parenting thing with your kids, teenagers talking with your mom and dad, teenagers making choices at school, you need to realize you may have a bad situation. But you can't allow that situation to dominate. You've got to say, God, I need your help. I've picked a word, and right now at school, I'm being bullied, and I need to know how to get out of it. I need to know how to choose wiser friends, and you've got to show me the friends that i got to kick to the curb because they're killing me. They're tearing me down. I'm never going to be the person that you want me to be if I keep hanging out with this guy or this gal. Amen? All right, then last. Uh, the, the last and final one is, People will change you. I kind of alluded to this earlier, but if you imagine if you put a word up there and you've told your daughter, uh, your son, your spouse, or somebody close to you, this is my one word, and you give them permission to just remind you every time they see you. Hey, man, fearlessness, right? Fearlessness, yeah, okay. All year long, every time you hear anything that's associated with fear, peace, or whatever, you're going to go, my word is fearlessness. My mom's going to ask me about it when I see her next week because every time I see her, I've given her permission to ask me about the change I'm trying to make in my life. And you're not, when you're giving them permission, you're giving them permission to remind you, not to fix you, right? Don't try to fix them. Just remind you. And God says, if you'll do these things, I will help you make the change Maybe it's the New Year's resolution you've made for the last four years. It's never changed. But this year, it's going to change because you're going to focus on it. Amen? So that's kind of the idea of one word that will change your life. So let me just rattle off some one words and we'll close. What would your one word be this next year? Would it be respect? Would it be life? Would it be motivation? Would it be inspire? Would it be attitude? Would it be awesome? Would it be respect? Would it be solid? Would it be harmony? Would it be courage? Would it be simply family? Would it be focus? Would it be the word new? Would it be ability? Would it be love? Would it be faith, commitment, believe, regroup? What would be the one word, and it's so hard to get into one word, but what would be the one word that would focus you to actually make a positive change for 2018? Would you close your eyes and just bow your heads just for a minute? What's that one word for you? I'm just going to pray over you. I'm going to ask you at the end of the service to go back there, write it. You don't have to put your name on it, but just write that one word. Your one word may hit that board, and three other people will go, man, I like that word. That's actually me. And, and in taking a moment 
in committing yourself to this one word. You're making a commitment to change, and you're inviting God to help you and the people that love you to help you. And I guarantee you, with God's help, you can do all things. Lord, we love you this morning. Uh, we need your help this year to make change in our life. There's a real big challenge to changing the way we do life. Many times we've done life a certain way for so many years, we just can't hardly get out of that pre-program and change. But we can't with your help. And I, I believe right now, Holy Spirit, that you're speaking to hearts in our church this morning. I believe that there's a word that's rising up within them right now. As I read off some of these words, it triggered in the hearts and minds of people here this morning that that one might be me. That, that word, when he said that word, it, my heart kind of jumped a little bit because I realized I need help and change in that area. And here's the great news. Lord, you're not trying to point out how terrible we are or the faults we have in this process. You're simply trying to point out this is where we're hurting as your children and you want to give us your almighty help. And so, Lord, as we make a commitment to you and the people we love with this one word, we can expect a great year, a great future, and really positive change in this area of our life. And we'll need your help, but we also know the Bible says you are faithful to help us. The Bible says that you have plans to prosper us, not to harm us, to give us a hope and to give us a great future. So take the stormy season of our life that we're in right now. Help us make the choices that will bring about change to walk us through the storm and out the other side. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen.